In this video, we're going to do a little bit of a geometry review and we're going to be reviewing the Pythagorean theorem. Most students, if you say, what's the Pythagorean theorem? The response is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But you need to understand what a, b, and c represent. So we're going to take a quick look at that. The Pythagorean theorem is named after the ancient Greek philosopher and mathematician Pythagoras, who um, many believe first developed um, this particular relationship that looks at the lengths of the three sides of a right triangle. Now hopefully you know that a right triangle is a three-sided polygon with one angle that measures exactly 90 degrees. And within that right triangle, the other two angles are acute, which means they measure less than 90 degrees. So here's a picture of a right triangle, and there's a couple of things I want to um, highlight here for you so that you'll have a sense of how you know, first off, that it is a right triangle. One is typically when you have a right triangle drawn, it, regardless of its orientation, whether it's turned pointing to the left or pointing to the right, typically in the corner you have a box, okay, or a square, and that square is an indication that you have a 90 degree angle. So that's one clue that you have a 90 degree angle. And typically when it's labeled, we typically use A, B, and C, the first three letters of the alphabet. Doesn't have to be A, B, and C, but that's the typical. And typically C represents that right angle, which means angle A and angle B are actually acute angles. The other thing that I want to point out to you are the other, other pieces or the sides of the triangle. If you look at your right angle symbol and think about it as being an arrowhead, if you'll notice the side that is across or that that box is pointing to across from the right angle is always called the hypotenuse. Okay, so the side across from or the side opposite the right angle is always called the hypotenuse. The two links or the two lines that come together to create the right angle. And I'm not drawing a very straight line there. So the two that I've kind of highlighted here in green where they come together and create that right angle can be called legs or they are called sometimes called sides. It just depends upon which author or textbook or instructor you might have, but they're called legs. Also notice how the um, sides are labeled. Notice that across from angle A, we use a capital letter to represent the angles. So this is angle A, and across from angle A, you have side A. And similarly, across from angle B, you have side B. So that's one thing that you want to keep in mind when you're labeling your triangle is that the side is opposite the given angle. Okay, We use capital letters for the angles and lowercase letters for the sides. And again, the most commonly used are your A, B, and C. Okay, so in terms formal math language, the Pythagorean theorem says the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs of a right triangle equals the square of the lengths of the hypotenuse. So in symbols, we're saying that if you take leg A, square it, leg B, square it, add it together, that that equals the hypotenuse squared. And again, most people simply remember the formula A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But it's important to note that A and B represent the legs or the sides of the triangle that come together to form the right angle and that C is the hypotenuse, which is the side opposite the right angle. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples of how to use this and just refresh our memory on using it. 
So here I have a triangle, okay, and I'm going to draw the box in the corner to indicate that I have a right angle. And I like to even label mine so that I know that the side opposite the right angle is my hypotenuse. And currently that's the one I don't know. And then I have leg that measures 8. And I have a leg that measures 15. Now, honestly, it doesn't matter which one I call A and which one I call B. So we'll call it leg A and leg B. And the hypotenuse, of course, is C. So knowing two sides, I can find the third side using Pythagorean theorem, which again in standard form is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So it becomes kind of a plug and chuck. So I have 8 squared plus 15 squared equals c squared. 8 squared is 64. 15 squared is 225, and that equals C squared. If I add those together, I get 289, which is C squared. Now remember, to undo a square, okay, you need to take the square root. And technically, when you take the square root, remember it could be positive or negative. However, since we're dealing with um, the length of a side of a geometric figure, it can't be negative. And the square root of 289, and you may have to get your calculator out, is 17. Okay, so in this case we have that C, which is our hypotenuse, has a length of 17. It's just a straight plug and chug doing basic algebra. Let's look at one more. In this case, again, let me draw in my little right angle symbol. Okay, so I have my right angle. I know the side opposite that, again, I like to label them as my hypotenuse, which is represented by C. I have leg A, which is 16, and I have leg B, which in this scenario is the one that I do not know. Okay, so again, using Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. And when you have a triangle and you're trying to find that third side, if you have a right triangle, you should always use Pythagorean theorem. If you don't have a right triangle, then we're going to be looking at some other options as we go throughout the course. So again, we basically plug and chug. We have 16 squared plus b squared that we don't know and then my hypotenuse, which is 20 squared. Okay, so then we have to do the math. 16 squared is 256 plus b squared equals 20 squared is 400. Then I'm going to do my good old basic math. I'm going to subtract, solve for b. So I'm going to subtract 256 from either side. So I have b squared equals 400 minus 256 is 144. And then I want to take the square root of both sides. Again, typically when you take a square root, you have to consider both the positive and the negative. But since we are looking at the length of a side of a triangle, it has to be positive. And the square root of 144 is 12. So the length of leg B is 12. So I hope this little quick review Pythagorean theorem helps you as you progress into the discussion of trigonometric functions.